dear YouTube friends and fellow martial artists, this video takes care of the common question, what is martial arts? The last months were very busy with teaching group and personal training lessons. Beside traditional and modern kumiti, I teach usually for about one month a black belt cutter and in addition for the students that are participating on that evening a kata which is mandatory for their next belt examination. Also important is Karate Bunkai, the meaning and application of the form. Bunkai is meant for use in self-defense. As with everything, if you get too deep into your work for a while, you lose the ability to think on a larger scale and to develop your art creatively. Then it's good to gain some distance and take a break for a few days, so that your thoughts can fly freely again. And that's what I did and went to Austria for a week this summer. In Germany, the question always comes up do you do fighting sport or martial arts? In German language, magst du Kampfsport oder Kampfkunst? Nowadays people think like this. If they practice a fighting sport like MMA, kickboxing, boxing, tie boxing or Krav Maga, etc. etc., they can also use it in competition or in real life. When he or she practices martial arts like Karate, Taekwondo, Judo, Tai Chi, Kung Fu, it's more for show, for health, for education, for the kids or for older people or simply for the sake of it because it doesn't work. So let's think deeper about it. I will divide this video in three parts. First part gives you a simple answer. Second part takes a deeper approach. And the last part is my personal conclusion, my experience. Simple answer for the question. In a competition or only self-defense sport, the fighter must develop all human abilities in the highest form possible but also in a very specific way. You must have anthropometric and basic fitness skills. Height, weight, age, your body type, your range are very important. Strength, speed, endurance, agility must be developed in a very specific form and on a high level achieved. Sensual skills and motor skills on a high level. Then you must develop a very good specific technique, single and individual techniques and combinations. Good footwork in striking martial arts. Positioning, display and coverage must work. High impact or strong holding power. You or hopefully your coach need strategic and tactical abilities more than everything. You need knowledge about attacking and defending. The ability to quickly process the knowledge gained in an ongoing fight. The ability to change distance, rhythm, tempo and tactics. You need a strong psyche, especially in a fighting sport diligence and assertiveness, psychological strength and mental stability, will, self-confidence, motivation. You must be in a good mood. You must have a good pre-start condition. 
willingness to take risks, courage, fear, and stress resilience and affirmation. The ability to take hard blows or injuries and ignore them in combat. And of course, you need experience and routine. So that's a lot. And if someone got it all, that's really impressive. But is it art? First it is a craft. Can a craft be art? Yes, but there are only a few who are artists in the fighting sports world. Is it effective in a real fight? Maybe or maybe not. I know a few stories about high quality sport fighters who were beaten on the street or in a bar fight. Competition is about winning. Values such as respect, group cohesion or compassion are not required. It's almost exclusively about the ego, about success and fame, the prize money, the newspaper article, the media representation. I could tell you hundreds of stories. The negative extrinsic motivation predominate. Often in such an environment, if he or she loses, they will quit. Let's take a look at martial arts. First of all, you need also the four columns of sports, as mentioned before in fighting sports. Body, technique, tactics and mind at a high level, with no excuses. If you are claiming to do martial arts and for example you are not able to run fast, you are not a martial artist. If you say you are old and can't do it anymore, then at least you must have been able to do it early in your lifetime. Only reading books, watching videos doesn't make you a martial artist. Yeah. Heute zurück an all der Wirkungsstätte. Vor 20, 25 Jahren haben wir hier an dem Hügel schon Steigungsläufe gemacht, Bergaufläufe. Weckt alte Erinnerungen, pfeift unglaublich rein. Gluteus Maximus, Adduktoren, Abduktoren, Strecker, Beuger, alles da. Schön. Bis jetzt haben wir acht oder neun Läufe hinter uns. So, what's the difference between competition and martial arts? There is no second place in real life fighting. We dig deep in all techniques, whereas in sport you have to limit yourself to a very limited technical repertoire. We can use very dangerous and deadly techniques and tactics that are not allowed in fighting sports. We don't have to obey sport rules. We have and practice and hopefully teach values. And a real martial artist are forced to use it. Respect, loyalty, group cohesion, compassion. All good human character traits. We believe in preserving the history of martial arts given us by our predecessors. We are exploring the history meaning and application of techniques given us by kata or forms. We are developing the art further in compliance with the old values and ideas. We practice old and modern balance. If you don't know how they work, you cannot defend yourself against it. We are also trying other recognized arts. This could be painting or playing an instrument. Art serves not always a purpose. A beautiful kick or a form that is masterfully executed is stunning beautiful. I'm still excited. We are not into politics. We are devoted to our martial art. We are open-minded and don't keep imitating false things. It's about our impression, experiences and adventures with all senses. We take care of our and society's security and health. 
We don't stop with martial arts. It's for a lifetime and not a temporary dry it out thing. Positive intrinsic motivations predominate. Now to the second part of the video. The second part takes a deeper approach. When is, in general, something art? And when is it not? The concept of art cannot be generally defined. When we think of art, we usually think of art museums, exhibitions, paintings, music, literature and sculptures. When we think of artists, for example, we think of Vincent van Gogh, Pablo Picasso, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, William Shakespeare, Goethe, Auguste Rodin, Ernest Hemingway, Henri Cartier-Bresson, Aretha Franklin, Keith Haring, The Beatles, Rolling Stones. In our modern times, now we also accept a photograph, a movie and a live performance as an art. And if you watch Ronaldo or Messi handles the ball, you will also say, wow, that's art. Today art can be a five-star dish from a world-famous chef, a cardiac surgeon or a fashion designer. Even sport cars like the Bugatti Supersport or the GD9 from Bosch are considered to be pieces of art. Surprisingly and strangely, the greatest scientists such as Einstein, Carl Friedrich Gauss, Stephen Hawking or Andrew John Wiles are not understood as artists. And also priests and politicians are not artists. Everything we perceive as art contains a strong creative and individual component of the respective artist. As the saying goes, art is in the eye of the beholder. Originally, art was defined as something artificial, made by humans, as opposed to something natural that one finds in nature. Die geheime Zutat. Instant. Und Maki. I'm really hungry for a hearty meal. Ois kata yo. As one of the greatest martial artists ever is Miyamoto Musashi considered. He lived from 1584 to 1645, fought and survived six wars, killed proven 62 enemies in single combats. The samurai and later Ronin created his own fighting style called Niten Ichiryu. He was also a good painter, made sculptures, created art with metal and wrote martial arts books which contained also life advices, like the famous Gordon Osho Book of Five Rings. About religion he said, respect Buddha and the gods without relying on their assistance. Now to the last part and this is my personal conclusion. When you are young and you want to fight in competitions, do it. It's an exciting way to express yourself, to explore your own body and mind. But hopefully you have a sensei and comrades in the dojo who will protect you from the darker evil side of it. For example, being carelessly or getting depressive after losses, being lonely because your environment doesn't understand what you are devoted to, getting selfish or even psychopathic, and the list goes on and on. 
If you are into self-defense, it's okay. You have the right to learn to protect yourself. If you are teaching only self-defense for money, don't forget you have a great responsibility. Short before I started karate in Germany, you had to apply for a police clearance certificate from Berlin. Only if that was okay, you were allowed to practice karate. Today I see that everyone is being taught the most dangerous techniques and tactics. Teaching and practicing combat techniques comes with a great responsibility. Remember that. For me, martial art is daily practicing, studying, further developing my art and this karate. Doing my art to stay healthy and body, mind and soul. In addition to that, I try other arts like creating music, painting, taking photographs, making movies, writing. I try to teach my students holistically and honestly, not to hold anything back and to make them aware of the dangers. Dear friends and fellow martial artists, thank you for watching this video. I hope that movie was interesting and helpful for your martial arts training or your own teaching. There would be so much more to tell, to teach, to discuss. Until now, I didn't see a video with this topic on YouTube. I wish you a good week. Yours, Jürgen Meyer from Germany.